There is, on the face of it, nothing to connect Queensbury, with its industrial roots around a mill, and the city of Bath, dating back to Roman times and renowned for its grand Georgian architecture. But there was a connection until last year. Both places could lay claim to more than a mile of disused railway tunnel. Not anymore, though. Whilst Queensbury's continues to decay, wheels are turning again beneath Bath's quiet suburbs. The two tunnels Greenway, a shared foot and cycle path, has shown there is an alternative to abandonment, rejuvenating Coombe Down and Devonshire tunnels on the former Somerset and Dorset Railway. The idea was first put forward by a local campaign group, but how did they overcome the practical and cultural barriers that stood in their way? It was natural that, that, that there'd be some scepticism, but as things have turned out, it's been an amazing success so far. What we had on our side was um, a large amount of community support, because on our first weekend at a, a weekend um, event at Green Park Station, Bath, which was to do with the closure of the railway, we put a book out on the table and said, please sign this if you'd like the two tunnels route to happen. And we got 650 signatures that weekend, which, is, which gives any campaign group a, a bit of a mandate to, to, to say that there is public backing for this. Well, when I first became aware of it, I was a councillor and I realised that for, for this to happen at all, it had to involve not only Sastrans and some capable campaigners, but the council. And I felt the group needed an inside voice and so I volunteered to handle the council communications. Um, a steering group was set up where the three parties met regularly to, to discuss it all. And uh, I think it came off the ground because the, the original campaign group were very good at publicising it, at having special events, at doing interesting things that would catch people's imagination. And that's really how it got going. Uh, we stuck together, we didn't give up, we, um, we badgered and badgered and badgered because we genuinely believed it was such a good idea that we weren't going to take no for an answer. So um, we, I think we wore a few people down. Uh, I think um, we kept knocking on officials' door, people who, who had a little bit of power, a bit of knowledge, and saying, come on, buy into it. And um, we gradually, over the years, we took seven years, and um, the lottery money came along, and we looked like if we were going to um, succeed, it was looking good. And it does look good. And more than a mile in length, Coombe Down was the 53rd longest railway tunnel in the country until it was withdrawn from operational service in March 1966. It was reborn as part of the two tunnels Greenway, along with Devonshire Tunnel, Tucking Mill Viaduct and three miles of former track bed on the 6th of April 2013. It's estimated that 265,000 trips are made along the route annually, making a genuine difference to the lives of those who use it. But has it brought wider benefits to the city itself? It's increased visitor numbers to Bath. People are coming to Bath specifically to see the two tunnels route. Visitors to Bath are also just finding it and, and and that, that's brilliant. It's, it's putting people into bed and breakfast and hotels, certainly. Even on a quiet weekday in October, there is a steady a flow of people through, but on the weekend, there are crowds and crowds. And I think it promotes cycling, it promotes leisure activity, it brings lots more visitors to Bath. The local people enjoy it as a local leisure facility. It's free at the point of use. It doesn't cost anything to use. Uh, it's a, a family enjoyed by all the family for exercise. And local businesses, including especially pubs, cycle hire, and tourist information centres have seen a massive increase in interest in uh, what is an amazing and unique facility uh, that can really benefit the area and bring, um, bring pride and, uh, and prosperity to the region. We had someone this morning from Cape Town, did they I say? I know, yes, yes. And we were able to give them a two tunnels map, which of course shows you exactly where all the access points are and what a nice round trip there is through the two tunnels and then along the canal, a 15 mile round trip. I was only this morning talking to a woman who's commuting from Hinton Charterhouse, a village south of here, to Bristol on a bike. Um, admittedly not all of us would be up for that but the fact that some of us are is brilliant so it's, it's used for commuting it's used for for leisure routes it hums on Sundays and weekends it, it's 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 busy as a beehive there was a serious hill to climb when those local campaigners first put forward the idea of the two tunnels greenway steeper than the one Coombe Down tunnel was driven through 
bringing the project to fruition demanded tenacity, lobbying skills, patience, self-confidence and a solid understanding of the issues such that any brickbats could be swatted away whenever they were thrown. Also needed were friends in high places and a considerable pot of money. Securing a future for Queensbury Tunnel will involve all of the above but the bath experience demonstrates that it is doable and well worth it in the end. Something a resource like this does is it just raises the profile of cycling and walking over an entire area. The fact that two tunnels route exists puts more people cycling onto the streets of Bath. Um, Queensbury Tunnel would do precisely that for Bradford and for Halifax. If people have got the, uh, got the vision and the courage to go ahead with it, projects such as this, uh, for Queensbury it could be a massive success and um, would be a real benefit in the area and I would certainly look forward to coming up there myself and, and trying it out when it opens. Mm -hmm.